The Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14 and the Lenovo Legion Pro 5 from 2023 are going head to head in this video. Now, the reason I'm comparing these two models is based on price point and the specs that are within them. Now, from Asus, you can get this laptop for about $1599, and from Lenovo, you can get this laptop for around the same price point maybe $50, $60 between the two models. But what we have before us is the Ryzen 9 7940HS versus the Ryzen 7 7745HX. Now, the Asus has the RTX 4060 and the Lenovo has the RTX 4070. Now, don't get crazy. I'm going off of price here, going off of buyer's decision. And that is what I'm focusing on with this video. I think you'll be impressed how much the G14 can keep up, but I think you'll be even more impressed by how much bang for buck you get with the Legion laptop. Now let's dive right in first and foremost with some usability, build quality, and then we'll get into the performance benchmarks. Now, as you can see, both laptops are assembled very well. That's one thing that Asus and Lenovo have been doing really well for the past couple of years. The side panels fit into the bottom cover very smooth, no catchy edges on on these laptops. Their assembly is neck and neck. Now, as far as the beloved tap test, some love it, some hate it. We have a plastic material on the Lenovo Legion Pro 5 for the bottom cover, aluminum for the top cover, and we have plastic for the keyboard deck. Whereas for the G14, we have an aluminum insert on the bottom, much more solid, and we have magnesium alloy for anything that you see that's white on the laptop. So it comes in obviously as a lighter laptop because of the smaller form factor, but also because of the magnesium alloy chassis. And that magnesium alloy is also found on the keyboard deck. Now taking a look at the inside of the laptop will happen in just a minute. <laughs> We have on the left side panel HDMI, USB Type-C, and a headphone jack. And for the Legion Pro 5, USB Type-A and a USB Type-C. Now on the right side panel for both laptops, we have a USB Type-A, a headphone jack, and a manual cutoff switch for the webcam on the Legion, and then two USB Type-As, USB Type-C, and a micro SD card reader. Things get more expansive for the Legion Pro 5 by having two more USB Type-As, HDMI, USB-C, network port, and of course your power adapter. So the connectivity is going to be better on the Legion uh, minus the micro SD card reader, but who actually uses those? Comment below if you use them. Now, if you're curious about the exact live pricing and availability between these two models, as I mentioned, you can head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. That's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. And food for a lot of children, because I have a lot of children and they eat a ton of food. I never expected that. Should have been foolish, foolish of me to not expect that. Okay, next let's jump into the laptop and take a quick look at the webcam so you can see the difference between the two. This is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Lenovo Legion Pro 5 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now regarding the audio experience, definitely gotta put my hat off to the G14. Here's the audio for each of the laptops so you can hear what they sound like, but I really like the G14 with those upward facing speakers. Now the keyboards are different, but they have a very similar click. They're nice and subdued and quiet. So both will work great in any office space or classroom. You will not annoy your neighbors. The trackpad on the other hand, the Lenovo is a little bit more of like a, a standard like click clicky sound where the Zephyrus G14 is a little more subdued. So I would say G14 for the trackpad as well. Here's a quick audio sample so you can hear for yourself. If you're a numpad user, you gotta get the Lenovo Legion, only one that comes with the numpad. However, both keyboards offer full-size shift keys, full-size enter keys, backspace, really nice function buttons along the top of the keyboard. And so they both have good functionality. They're not limited by any sort of weird or quirky keyboard configurations. Now looking at the display, you get an advantage with the Legion for brightness, but not for the actual color gamut range. 
However, the Delta E is better on the Lenovo, and I'll explain through all that right now. So you'll see the results coming up on the screen. Basically, if you want a brighter screen, go over the go for the Lenovo. If you want more color gamut range, go for the Asus Zephyrus G14. If you want more color accuracy, go for the Lenovo Legion. So basically what we're seeing here is although the G14 covers a larger range of colors, the Lenovo is going to cover those at a higher accuracy. So in a way, they'll both kind of meld together. One has a larger range, but one's more accurate at producing its range. So that's the difference between color gamut range and color accuracy. Color accuracy as the accuracy at which those colors are reproduced. The range is the amount of colors that the screen can reproduce. Uh, but brighter screen on the Lenovo, slightly dimmer screen on the G14. For the sake of comparison, let's just throw the weight and thickness up on the screen. I know we're dealing with very different laptops, 14 inch versus 16 inch, but just so you can see if you're comparing these two, which I know a lot of you are, I've had a lot of comments about you considering a G14 or a Legion Pro 5, I totally understand that purchasing decision, it would actually be in my range as well. So there is the weight and thickness for you so you just know what you're getting into. Now the upgrade path to me would be a big part of my decision making process. The Lenovo Legion dominates with two occupiable RAM sticks and two occupiable SSD slots. The Zephyrus G14 is a good upgrade this year because it comes with 16 gigs soldered to the motherboard and an unoccupied RAM slot where you can put a stick in post-purchase. I would definitely be putting a stick in post-purchase because if you've watched my 32 gigs of RAM video with a G14, I'll link it up at the end of this video, it is definitely worth that extra stick, especially with the RTX 4060. I go into a whole rant on my full review about how I would actually start with the 4070 if I was gonna purchase this laptop, but that's for another video which I've already recorded. You can go ahead and put a 16 or 32 gig stick in here. You maybe could put a 64, but honestly, I think it would be such an imbalance uh, with the, the RAM being that the soldered one is a 16. So I'd probably stop at 32 personally. That's what Asus rates the laptop for, is a 32 gig stick in that secondary slot. Without further ado, let's get into the performance, and then I'm gonna give my recommendations and conclusions on which one you should purchase depending on your use case. Now going ahead and jumping into the simulated benchmarks, if you're somebody who's looking for more multi-core performance and really just more performance in general, the Legion Pro 5 is actually showing to be a better performer, even though we're seeing it with a Ryzen 7 CPU versus the Ryzen 9. Now, part of that is being that there's a higher TDP on the Legion Pro 5's processor with that HX configuration. The HS, S, not X, annoying that they did that. That's a whole nother conversation. Could be like the HQ because Q, it doesn't confuse with S. Anyway, the HS processor has a lower TDP. The HX has a higher TDP. So even though it's a seven, it technically performs at a higher thermal limit and just a bunch of technical jargon that you really don't need to know, but you just need to know that the HX performs at a higher level. So you can see with the simulated benchmarks that that proves out true. And as we move on to Blender Classroom, because of the slightly larger GPU, you're getting slightly better performance. But as you can see, Blender Classroom is a 1,081 for the Lenovo Legion Pro 5, and it's only a 941 for the G14. So you're only losing about 120 points of performance. If you went ahead and got this with the RTX 4070, you would either match the Legion 5 or surpass it, which is why I think the G14 is such a great bang for buck because it just packs so much punch in such a little package at such a great price. But the, the Legion 5 is a great price too and it's a bigger laptop. So it's like, it's so hard to decide between these two. All right, the next one we're gonna look at is 3D modeling. And again, because of the larger RTX 4070, we're seeing better performance. Now I know you're saying, Ben, why didn't you just compare the 4070 to the 4070? Well, first and foremost, I haven't been able to get my hands on one. And second, that wouldn't be a price to price comparison, which to me actually makes quite a big decision-making process when you're working with a specific budget. But as you can see, the G14 gets good 3D modeling benchmarks. However, the Legion Pro 5 definitely steps it up above the G14. Now going ahead and looking at Photoshop, you can see that we score a 1,102 out of the Legion Pro 5, and then a 915 out of the Zephyrus G14. Now a little sneak peek into my 32 gigs of RAM video, which I will link up at the end of this video you can get 1,194 out of the G14 by upgrading it to 32 gigs of RAM. So do note that that would be a very worthy upgrade and you'll end up with better performance than the Lenovo Legion Pro 5. 
but you got to go watch that full video for all the details and all the different benchmarks. I'm not going to keep bringing it up. That'll make this video too long. The next thing to look at is After Effects. And After Effects, once again, was proven that the Legion Pro 5 was a better contender, a 923 versus an 801 for the stock configuration of these two laptops. Now, jumping on down into the export times, you can see for the 4K export, we scored a 226 versus the 309 out of the G14. So I would be alluding towards the Legion Pro 5 for the export time for 4K to 4K. Now that's a nine minute 4K clip exported out of Premiere Pro at 4K full quality YouTube settings. Now heading on down into 6K B-RAW, this is where things got really interesting. The 16 gigs of RAM single channel really bottlenecked to the G14. As you can see, it took about 24 minutes to export a 6K B-RAW clip, whereas it only took 16 minutes and 39 seconds out of the Legion Pro 5. Once you go ahead and put that extra stick of RAM in there, it definitely beefs up the laptop and ends up beating out that 16 minutes at around a 14 minute export time. But still, that's not comparing stock to stock. That's going ahead and starting to make upgrades to the laptop. Looking at 6K playback for each of these laptops, you can see that that we have an advantage with a Legion Pro 5. You could say that that's because of the RTX 4070, but I disagree. I think it's because of this single channel RAM. RAM actually has a big influence on playback inside of Premiere Pro because when I upgraded it to 32, I saw almost the same results as this RTX 4070. And so that proves to me that that 4060 is not a huge, huge bottleneck. It's more of the fact of the single channel RAM versus the dual channel RAM. As soon as you slide that extra 16 gig stick in there, it really redeems the performance of this laptop. Now, if you're looking to have a great on-the-go laptop, without a doubt, the G14 is the way to go. That Ryzen 9 7940 HS processor is so much more efficient. You see, we're getting over 12 hours of battery life compared to the eight hours of battery life with the Allegiant Pro 5. So from a battery life standpoint, on the go friendly, that's the way to do it. Now, both of the laptops were set at 20% screen brightness with a refresh rate of 60 Hertz, battery saver mode in Windows, and both of them were set to iGPU mode and the quietest mode possible so as to not run the CPU at too high a performance which means that you will not have access to the GPU while getting great, great battery life results or the best battery life results possible for each of these laptops. But once you get to where you're going, plug your laptop back into the charger, access that GPU and you're good to go. To me, the battery life results are great for streaming video playback or for doing productivity, office work, school work, whatever it might be. Which one should you buy? And to me, this is kind of a difficult question to answer because though they're at the same price point, we see slightly different specs before us and slightly different results. But punch for punch from a budget standpoint, I think the best bang for buck is going to be the Legion Pro 5. You get a larger screen, you get better performance, and you don't get the weird hang up of having single channel RAM. However, if you're looking for great battery life, if you're looking to make an upgrade to the laptop, then the G14 is a great contender. It's thin, it's light, it has a great trackpad, has great battery life, has great color gamut range, um, but it is a little bit of a bottleneck with that single channel RAM. Now, I would definitely recommend watching my full length review of the G14, because I'll give you a lot of perspective on why I would consider going for an RTX 4070 of this laptop, which would increase the price of it, but might give you overall benefits in the long run. So again, links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase and click or tap the screen here for one of the other videos I talked about in this one. I'll see you in the next one.